the scripture says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also. Now note carefully, this is important. Unto this generation. This past week I have, uh, I have watched a, a video and uh, I have the book by Jonathan Kahn, Return of the Gods. And I don't know if you've seen that yet. Uh, I highly recommend it. In his book and video of the return of the gods, he talks about the dark trinity that's coming back to America. When I say back to America, it's because at one time America was, at least on the surface, a Christian nation. America had a lot of believers in it. Still does, but it wasn't that many years ago that upwards of 80 to 90% of all Americans said they were Christians. Today it's hardly 60% and the figure is dropping in free fall. So people are abandoning the church in droves. Why, are, why is that? Why are they leaving? Because there's a spiritual part of a man that can only be satisfied not by physical things, but by Almighty God. So somewhere along the line, it seems to me like uh, most of what calls itself the church is an absolute, complete, abject failure. How many of you agree with me that this morning? Amen. Now the idea here from the book of Matthew 12 is that once these spirits leave and then my friend return, when they return, the state of that man is worse than it ever was before. And he is saying that these spirits now are returning to America and lays out the foundation of why they're coming back. And this is important to understand the principle and thesis of this book. So the first one of the dark trinity to come to America since the Holy Spirit has been turned away, since they've turned God out of school, since they've kicked prayer out of school, and my dear friend, taken the word away from most of the people in this country, the first spirit that comes back is the spirit of Baal or Baal. That is the spirit of the possessor. Now he noticed, notice carefully his progression in his thought and a progression in the way this thing works. It is the possessor. And the possessor simply is the one who comes first of all to take away all that is good. In other words, to create a vacuum. And my dear friend, once a vacuum is created, then something will rush to take its place. And that's what Baal does. And so in the 60s, when they began to kick God out of the, out of the schools, out of the, out of the marketplace, out of, out of the public square, when they did all of that, then they opened the door by doing that for a spirit that would replace the Almighty will not stay where he's not wanted. Note carefully what it says in the book of Romans chapter number one. As they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And so therefore the possessor comes and he begins to take possession because the door has been opened and God was driven from the schools, the culture, the public square, the universities, the corporate America, and on and on and on and on and on and on the list go. Let me tell you something this morning, how close you are to completely losing your freedom of speech, which is the first amendment. How close preacher, when they throw the preachers in jail, when they come for the pastors and the evangelists, mark it down, that's in. All freedom of speech is gone when that happens from this country. Right now, the marketplace, the school systems, everything else out there, you know as well as I do, you have no freedom of speech. There are places out there that if you voice your opinion, you're finished. At that moment, there is no debate in the colleges. It is, it is their way or no way. If you don't believe that I'm correct in this, just go check it out. 
So like a cancer, it has eaten into that freedom of speech. And my dear friend, if you don't have freedom of speech, then nothing the rest of it matters. And so out goes God. And when he goes out, what comes in his place? Baal. And so Baal has entered in to destroy everything and turn it upside down that America had ever believed and loved. And so then what happens? Well, the second evil spirit or the second spirit to return would be the enchantress. And this is what uh, Mr. Khan puts in his book. So who is this? This is the wife of Baal. Her name is Ashtoreth. And she goes by different names according to the culture. The culture accommodates according to their culture, renames this goddess, but she's the same thing wherever she goes. Her name is Ashtoreth. She's called Ishtar. She's called Aphrodite. She's called Venus. She's called Diana. She's called this and she's called that. But here is what marks her character. She is a wildly fanatic, sexual, deviant, and pervert. She knows no bounds. She, cross, she knows no barriers. She is free to run wild in every direction she possibly can. She brings sexual immorality, sexual perversion. Everything that has to do with sex is her market. And so this is Ashtoreth. How could this happen, preacher? How in the world could something like that come to a Christian country like America? It's not Christian anymore, folks. You kicked God out and let Baal come in. Now, I'm going to get to the churches in just a few minutes to show you how far God's been kicked out. But he's out. And so since he's out, the goddess of sexuality, sexual immorality, self-gratification, she can't control herself. She's called a harlot. She's called a prostitute. Did you know that the Greek word for prostitute is porn or porne? This is where we get the English word pornography. This is that stuff that pops up on your internet. This is what you see out there on the internet. There are millions of pornographic sites in this country. Did you know that and around the world? Let me give you just a little bit of... Uh, statistics as it relates to pornography. This is important because it is mind boggling when you think about the spirit of Ishtar. Pornography use increases the marital infidelity rate by more than 300%. 11 is the average age that a child is first exposed to pornography. It's mind developing and it has that put in front of its face. God had a reason for telling you to put clothes on. 56% of American divorces involve one party having an obsessive interest in pornographic websites. Now buckle up for what I'm about to tell you. 68% of church going men and 50% of pastors view porn on a regular basis. Of young Christian adults, 18 to 24 years old, 76% are actively searching for pornography. Now, how many of you got slapped just then? How many of you got shocked just then? How many of you had the curtain, the cover pulled back on what you're doing? How many of you are going to leave out of here today? And this coming week, you're going to go back to your favorite pornographic site. And you're going to wonder why that you have no spiritual walk with God. You're going to wonder why that your prayers aren't answered. You want to know why your joy is gone from you. You want to know why you're bored to death in church. You want to know why that your wife is no longer that sweetheart that you married. Some of you in the first place married a pretty face. Some of you married a pretty body. And then some of you might have married somebody's soul and spirit and had a real marriage when that took place. Because the face will change, the body will change, but if the marriage is laid out according to the scripture, it'll last your whole lifetime, amen. Fact of the matter is your love for each other will go stronger and stronger and stronger by the day. So mark it down as surely as you live by the flesh, you'll die for the rest of your life by the flesh for you'll never be satisfied. So pornography robs you of your home, it robs you of your marriage, a prostitute uh, a prostitute brings her, her sexuality into the marketplace to be bought and sold. So what does that do to the marriage covenant of two people? It belittles it, it destroys it, it drives it down. 
It takes, it takes its value away. This is why today there's so many marriages are ending in divorce. They weren't married to begin with. They don't know what a marriage is. Do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? I've been so many. You wouldn't know. You have no idea how many marriages I've performed in 46 years. And I don't know. God, the only one that knows how many of them are still married after all these years. Amen. If you're watching pornography, quit it right now. Get on your face and repent. Tell God to cleanse that spirit from you. For you have picked up the spirit of Ishtar. Amen. And Ishtar connects you directly with the pornography, perversion, and all the rest of it out there. 57% of pastors say porn addiction is the most damaging issue in their congregation. Of course, I have to say for the poor old pastor, you need to get right with God and quit blaming everything else for the problem in the church. Turning away from God in the 60s. How many have ever heard of psychedelic music or LSD or Woodstock? And this was when America started fast downhill away from God. The 60s was the part that opened the door. Ishtar overturns, she replaces, she perverts, she brings in pagan sexuality. Did you know that in ancient Rome, if you walk down any street in ancient Rome, you would have male or female genitalia displayed everywhere all over the place. So I didn't know that, check it out. They were obsessed with sex. Obsessed with it. Any culture that becomes obsessed with sex is headed down. It won't make it, friend. Sex will not keep your marriage together. You've got to have something stronger than that, something that has meaning to it. And the only meaning they'll ever join two together is when their hearts are bound together. Love is what a woman's looking for. Can man, can you love her? Can you love your wife? The Bible said husbands love your wives. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. You initiate that love towards your wife. She's looking for that. She's looking for a man too. <laughs> Have you ever noticed the femininity of men today? It blows my mind, folks, of what's going on. I'm going to have to do a little digging into it. But I got some ideas of what's causing this. It's not so much the culture causing it. They're born that way, a lot of them, with a spirit that animates them and causes them to be that for the rest of their life. Where does that spirit come from? Where does it come from? What causes that in the beginning? This is a problem we've got. People need to get right with God. Amen, amen, amen. America has become sexualized. Yes, it has. Did you know that there are more witches in America than there are Presbyterians? New Age movement has taken over this country. A lot of the churches today, when they worship, it's New Age. It's New Age. New Age. That's sad, isn't it? Ancient inscriptions about Ishtar, and some of them say this, I'm a woman, I'm a man. That's androgyny. Praise is for Ishtar. You are the one that turns a man into a woman and a woman into a man. The masculine man today is called toxic masculinity. But the masculine woman is bravo. See what they're doing? Upside down, upside down. Calling evil good and good evil. The gods go after your children. Girls are being trained today to be self-sufficient. I don't need a man. And, the, and feminism, once it locked itself in to the young ladies, has literally destroyed a feminine. And girls being self-sufficient, the boys, you know, the natural inclination of the man is to protect and defend. He's the protector, right? Amen. I mean, if somebody kicks your door down, do you send your wife down to check out and see who did? Or do you go down and see what did it? Amen. <laughs> you stay here and I'll go call for help. <laughs> Yeah, which one is it? They're on their shooting video games. They're doing their protecting. They're doing their fighting. But it's been taken out of the home. And it's been perverted. Then the third one is the destroyer. Once we have Baal, who does away, empties and destroys, and, and does away with God. And then we have Ishtar, the enchantress. And you are living in that age. Then what do we have left? We have the destroyer. Who's that? That's Molech. Moloch, he's the one that laid the babies in his arms and rolled off into his belly. The Carthaginians were big on Moloch. Yeah, you remember Hannibal? You ever read about Hannibal in history? 
Hannibal on his, on, on his elephants as he came against Rome and all of that. Well, he came from, the, he came from North Africa. From Carth he was a Carthaginian. Baby sacrifice. Human sacrifice. All over the world. What stopped it, preacher? Why did they quit? The preaching of the cross of Christ. The gospel of the grace of God. I was born into a country that had been built upon the foundation of the preaching of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank being a God for it. But people today, bless your soul, look what they're born into in this country now. That's sad, don't you think? Moloch, a pagan world. It's common to offer up human beings. Well, are they sacrificing any human beings in America today? How about 63 million? How about 63 million? Oh yeah, they're sacrificing them. They're killing them. And do you know something? They're not satisfied. This stuff always leads to something else. This is a California governor signs an infanticide bill as California works to become the most radical abortion state. And this is by Olivia Summers, uh, dated uh, September the 30th. On September the 27th, 2022, Governor Newsom signed what amounts to be a perinatal, in other words, after birth, infanticide bill, AB 2223, along with 12 other pro-abortion bills, as we've informed you, AB 2223 is especially egregious because it prevents coroners from investigating the deaths related to or following known or suspected self-induced or criminal abortion including deaths of babies during the perinatal period, which is up to 28 days after birth. Now, what's that? What's that? That's infanticide. But you see, it's a small step to kill the baby and then kill in the womb and then kill uh, the baby that's been born. It's a small step. You noticed how radical, how radical these left-wing fanatics became when the Supreme Court said, here's all they said. They didn't stop abortion. What did they do? They said, send it back to the states. Let Tennessee determine, or Alabama, or Florida, or Michigan, you know, New Hampshire, let them determine their laws on abortion. No, oh boy. I have never seen such wild fanaticism in a long time. When it came to that, it's freedom of my body. Really? Yeah. There's a little baby inside your body. But you see, it's, 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 it's there. There's a reason for it. There's a reason because now we're taking step by step by step, which opens the door. We have a nation full of men and women that are possessed by the spirit of Baal, by the spirit of Ashtoreth, by the spirit of Moloch. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.